guys, Deborah from Housework the Collective here. Today we are making clay sonic screwdrivers for the Whovian in your life. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a minute and share this um, video around. Shoot. Guys, I cannot get my tripod to work. It did this in the last video too. I think maybe I need a bigger one, a bigger phone cradle. There we go. Stay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share this around for a minute so we can get a few of you on. And then we will, I'll show you how to make these. Those are super fun, they're super easy to make. I make them with my second grader all the time. She kind of loves them. So, let me, I wanna scoot this down a little bit so you can see the table. There we go. Okay, let me grab the link so we can share this. If my iPad will work. So when you hop on, let me know where you're tuning in from and what the weather's like there. It's still cold here. Our pool is supposed to be open on Monday and it's still cold. I'm so sad. Okay, this might not be working. This iPad hates me. It never seems to work. Okay, I guess it's kind of an older iPad. So let me try and grab the link from over here. I'm just gonna share it around so I can show you how to make these super cute doc Dr. Hasonic screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can do it. Those of you just joining us, I'm Deborah from House of Eclectic. Today we are making clay Dr. Who sonic screwdrivers. Um, I'm just going to share this around for a minute so we can get some more people on and then we'll get started. If my iPad will ever work, which it probably will. I swear my makeup didn't look that crazy when I put it on this morning. I think it's the light in here. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Let me see. Let's try and share this because we want to, we're going to spend the time showing you how to do this. I want to be able to show it to a few people. So we'll go ahead and share. Maybe. I don't know. My internet's a little touchy though sometimes. Okay, so today we are making Doctor Who Sonic Screwdrivers. Today we are making pens. You can make these out of anything. You can make them out of crochet hooks. Um, if you just want a, a screwdriver, you can make it out of a dowel, but I like to make them out of pens, make them a little bit more practical, you know. Um, oh, there we go, it finally worked. Maybe not. Gosh, guys, all sorts of struggles today. At least they're not technical struggles. My last video on Monday, so I'm live on Mondays and Fridays. Um, Friday's always here on Housewife Eclectic from uh, 11.30 to 12.30 my time, so um, 1.30 to 2.30 Eastern. And Sorry, I can't seem to type and talk at the same time. It's a struggle of mine. Okay, when you tune in, let me know where you're, where you're watching us from today. I am in Utah and it's cold. And it's not supposed to be cold, guys. It's almost Memorial Day. I'm quite unhappy about that. Um, so I'm looking forward to warm weather. Okay, posting. Almost done, guys, sorry. I always like skip the share part. I always go like straight into the tutorial part and I keep being told that's not good. You have to do the share part so people know you're on. But see, I hate doing the share part. Hi, Lorene. Hi, Brandy from Texas. Oh, Texas is my favorite. I probably say that every time someone says they're from Texas. I have a little bit of a Texas obsession. Although, I don't know if I would move right back to where we used to live in Texas. That's kind of not a super, super safe area. But I would move back to San Antonio in a heartbeat. Okay. But I always skip the share part and go straight to you know, the craft, but they tell me it's not good because then we don't have people on, so, but I can't seem to like talk why I share, so I'm trying really hard, you know, to, to do both today and 
We'll see how I'm doing. Okay. So, oh, nope. See, can't do it, guys. Can't do it both at once. Um, so today we are making Dr. Who Sonic screwdrivers. Craft, 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 DIY. Aha, we win. Okay, one more thing to do, and then we are gonna do this. Are you excited? You should be. Okay, these are super, super easy to make. Um, I make them with my second grader. Um, she loves them. Oh, no, I forgot two more shares. Dang it, guys, struggles. I am not like an iPhone person. I have a Galaxy and I love it. It's like my favorite thing ever. So every time I have to use my iPad, I'm like, why isn't this working? Why is it doing this? Oh, I might have to shut my front door. Dang it, it's hot in here, so I have my front door open. Hang on just a second. didn't expect the neighbor to start mowing their lawn. It's kind of freezing outside. I didn't think they would be mowing their lawn. Thank you, Casey, for sharing. If you guys want to go ahead and share this video to your timeline, it will help you later if you're going back and making the craft. So you can kind of skip around and see, see what you want to see. Um, okay, I have two more shares to do. Hang on just one second. I know, I hate this part. I always want to skip it. I just want to, like, be done with it, but... Then I get in trouble for not sharing my video. So I'm gonna go ahead and share it. Oh, not in a group, on a page. Okay, almost done. One more. You excited? I'm almost done. See, this is why I don't like doing it. It's taking me like seven minutes. Now you're all just sitting here like, get to your craft. I will, I promise. Almost there. Last one. Mama loves food. There it is. Okay, guys. Whew. We are done with that. So we are ready to get going on this craft. I have posted um, pretty much everything you're going to need for the craft up in the description. Um, I really like, if you want to look at the description, I really like the Sculpey that I posted in the description because it has, it's like a sampler pack. So it has one ounce of tons and tons and tons and tons of different colors. So I think that if you're going to make these, that would be a great thing to get because you're going to want some different colors for these. Those of you that just are just tuning in with us, we are making Doctor Who Sonic screwdrivers. And um, we today are making them out of pens because I like having the extra functionality of a pen. Um, but you can make them out of crochet hooks. You know, my, my mom has arthritis and she crochets and she has a little bit harder time holding the crochet hook. So this would be something really great for someone who has a little bit harder time holding the crochet hook because it makes it a little bit thicker, easier to grab onto. So I'm making them out of pens. If you want it to just be a sonic screwdriver, you could always just make it out of a dowel. But I think it's fun to have the extra um, ability to have it as a pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I, the ones I have, the examples I have that I've made. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments here and I will answer them. Or if you're struggling a little bit, I do have a written tutorial up in the description that you can go look at. So um, this is one here. You see the buttons. I love the ones that have the swirls around them. Those are my favorite. So there's that one. This one, I love the mix of the colors in this one. But of course you need your TARDIS blue because TARDIS blue. Oh no, broke it. Well, I didn't actually break it, I missed. And then, for some reason, I love the red ones. I just think, like, hi, Sarah, where are you tuning in from? Um, I love, I know in most, you know, you don't associate red with Doctor Who, but for some reason, the red on the Sonic screwdrivers looks fantastic. So, this is a super easy craft. I'm going to put these right here. Maybe you can see them a little bit. Hi, Sarah from Illinois. Um, you, so I'm making pens. So the kind of pens you need are actually like the cheapo pens, which is super funny that you need. So these are, I think almost all hotel pens. You can see that one says Hampton on it. 
that one says homestead that's a like local place so um you need the pens that pull from the top you don't want pens where you have to unscrew and take the ink out from the bottom because um you're going to cover up the bottom and then you won't be able to put the ink back in and it won't be a pen so if you want you could always use <clears throat> If you wanted to do a sonic screwdriver that wasn't a pen, you could always use a pen as your base um, and then just not put the pen back in. But we want to be able to use them as pens. So we are going to, so you need cheap pens that you can pull from the top. A lot of the big pens you can pull from the top. Let me see if I can do this without me. There we go. See, you see how I pulled that from the top? That's what you want to be able to do. <clears throat> oh man. So cheap pens that you can pull from the top, lots of clay. Like I said before, I really like the sampler pack that I linked to up in the comments just because you're going to get so many different colors that you can kind of do whatever you want. So for me, the biggest colors are white, silver, black, red, and like TARDIS blue. Those are the ones I like to make. I think we might do one that's hot pink today because my kids are all about hot pink right now. So um, pens that pull from the top and um, Sculpey. Then you're going to want marbles and glass beads. If you don't have glass beads, I'm not using glass ones today. I'm using plastic ones. You just have to watch them really carefully once you put them in the oven because they will start to lose their color a little bit. Like if you see this one, can you see how there's just a little bit of color missing right there? So, which isn't a big deal. Like you can hardly tell on this one, but you just want to be careful about it, especially, you know, putting plastic in the oven. So the very first thing you are going to want is parchment paper. Um... Those of you just joining us, we are making Dr. Who Sonic screwdriver pens. Super, super, super easy to make. I make them with my second grader all the time. They're way fun. Um, so the first thing you're going to want is, can you guys see my table really well? Let me scoot you back a little bit. Um, hi, Catalina. Where are you tuning in from? So you want a big thing of purchase paper. And the reason you want parchment paper is because clay kind of permeates everything. It's going to permeate your table. You're actually, anytime you use something for clay, you're never supposed to use it for food again. So if you, um, you know, are molding on spoons or stuff like that, you're never supposed to use them for food again. So that can make it really rough. So um, the best thing to do is just avoid um, touching it on to, touching your clay onto things that you, you don't, that aren't disposable. Um, you can cook, I mean, it is called oven baked clay. You can cook it in the oven. I prefer to cook it in a dedicated toaster oven just because I know that that's a little bit safer, but I have done it in my oven before and it's, it's fine. So I'm going to grab a couple of books to hold down this big piece of parchment paper while we work. Those of you just tuning in, we are making Dr. Who Sonic screwdrivers, the perfect for the little Whovian in your life or just for a fun way to, you know how a doctor's office is, you always see those big pens that are like have flowers on top so people will take them. You can make Dr. Who ones instead. Okay, so we've got our big parchment paper down. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we take our Chibo pens that you can pull, you wanna be able to pull the ink from the top so the pen looks like this. And we're just gonna set the ink aside so that we can put it back in the pen after it bakes. I don't know that we're actually gonna have time to bake them today, but we'll get all the way to that process and then I'll walk you through it. Hi, Susan, where are you tuning in from? Okay, let's see if I can pull this out. My, I don't have to use my teeth. Don't tell my dentist, brother. There we go. He's always like, every time he sees me do something like that, he's like, don't use your teeth for that. Ooh, that one came out. He'd be so proud. I know, I know I shouldn't use my teeth, but sometimes your fingers are just not working. That one might not come out. We might be only making three today. Okay, so we've got, hi Camille, so good to see you. Um, we've got three pens with the inks taken out. We've set this aside the inks for later. So we're just gonna start with one. Um, let's do start with like a white and a TARDIS blue since you know that's the most typical, I think. So let me open. Always make sure after you use your um, so there's a little block of white. We'll start with and some blue. So always make sure after you use your clay that you see that I've got it in a plastic bag here. That'll keep it from drying out. It is going to be softest right out of the package. 
So, whew, we're throwing clay everywhere. Um, so, I mean, this, obviously, I since it was in a plastic bag, I've used it before. So, it might take a little bit longer to get it to warm up and stuff, but it should be just fine. Let me see if I've got any gray with me today. I really like gray, so there's black. Oh, here's my gray. I really like gray in these sonic screwdrivers because I feel like it adds, you know, a super fun... Well, and I think it's probably because the 10th Doctor's sonic screwdriver is gray and... <sighs> if you know me at all, you know how I feel about David Tennant. He's kind of my favorite. <laughs> Lorene says her mom always reminds her how much she paid for my perfect, her perfect teeth. So, my parents did too. I had braces for three years and my teeth still aren't straight. The dentist, the orthodontist who put them on, like, didn't know what he was doing at all. So, my brother is an orthodontist up in Seattle and he's a fantastic orthodontist. So, he's always telling me that I need to come up there and he can actually fix my teeth. So, we'll see if that... So, this I like. It's like, it's... um. It's kind of, it's a gray, but it's kind of a shimmery gray. So maybe, you know, they might call it, let me see if they call it silver. Silver. So this is a silver instead. So it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it, which is super pretty. And this is straight out of the package. So it's really soft and malleable. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just work that clay. So I'm just going to talk to you for a minute as we work this clay. Those of you that are just joining us, I'm seeing lots of people hop on. We are making Dr. Who Sonic Screwdriver pens. Perfect for the hooping in your life. I've made these for presents before. Um, they're super fun. Anyone who, who loves Doctor Who is going to love one of these. Um, so I'm just work, working the clay, warming it up in my hands. Yeah, Jen, this is actually, it's a super fun idea. My kids love it. They love to make these. It's a little bit harder for my three-year-old. She usually ends up, I usually end up wrapping the pin, and then she puts the little buttons on and stuff like, too, like that. But my second grader can do it all by herself. So it's kind of a perfect thing. So this one warmed up really fast. So we've got this little ball here. Next thing I'm going to need to warm up is this white. And I might actually need a little bit more white than this. Let me see if I've got more. <clears throat> So normally I just, ooh, this one's soft. Ooh, let's get more of that one. Um, normally I just make, um, if I'm making something like this, I will just work the clay while I'm watching TV with my husband or something like that. Um, it just, hi Amy, good to see you here. It just makes it a little bit easier. So just work that in your, back and forth in your hands. Getting it all soft. Okay, this one's warming up pretty good. You don't want to get this, you don't want this one to get cold while we're warming up this one. So kind of work it with your other hand every now and then. Okay, so we've got parchment paper down, so we're not doing this directly on the table. <clears throat> Man, I've got a little frog in my throat today. I'm not sure what's going on. Of course, I'm fine until I go live, right? Like my toddler princess cap. Um, so this is, someone asked, um, what kind of clay do you use? This is oven bake clay. You want to be able to bake it in the oven. Um, I guess you could probably use air dry clay. I've never tried it. So I can't tell you that that works or that it's going to hold up. Or my husband made me a wand out of um, air dry clay for... Christmas <clears throat> and it's held up pretty well but I don't let the kids play with it um we made my daughter a flower wand out of um air dry clay last year at comic-con and it's not held up well so um I think the I think the oven bake clay holds up a little bit better under you so I think that's probably what you're going to want for these pens so I've worked this white so now I want to pinch it down to a snake and then we're gonna roll it this is like the one thing I hate about working on parchment paper kind of a pain in the butt to roll on okay see 
all. <clears throat> but like I said, clay kind of permeates everything. Once you use something for clay, you're not supposed to use it for food ever again. So I don't like to work on clay directly on my table. I do have an art table downstairs that I don't mind working clay with directly on it because it's for coloring and stuff. So we roll out a snake of the white and then we're going to pinch off some of the silver. Um, I was saying earlier, I like the silver over the gray because the silver kind of has like sparkles in it a little bit which I feel is appropriate for this project. So I'm gonna roll out. See, cardamom paper stinks, guys. Hate it. Okay, it doesn't stink. I really love it for lots of things, but for rolling clay, it's a little frustrating. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try and hold the parchment paper with one hand. Okay, so roll it into a snake. Oh, look at that pretty shimmer in that silver. Love it, love it, love it. So let me know where you're tuning in from today. I'm in Utah and it's cold and I'm so sad. Come on, Utah, it's me. Stop being emotional and just let us have summer. So roll it into a snake. So you've got two long snakes here. See, both of my snakes. <clears throat> okay, I am going to wrap them around each other. Just twisty, twisty, twisty. See my twists? So this is not a perfect science, and almost every time I make them, I have to fix something. So it's all pretty and twisty. Lizzie, is it is it cold in Colorado today, or is it warm there? Oh, Deborah, I like the way you spell your name. I don't find many Debras that spell it the same way I do. So now we've got it twisted, and we're going to roll it again. So you just you want them to be incorporated like that. So roll... It's 90 degrees in Rhode Island. That doesn't even sound fair. So we have a pool in our backyard. Which sometimes I think is a little ridiculous because we live in Utah. And it's only warm for three months out of the year. But and our pool guy and the pool guy was supposed to come and open it on Monday so we could swim. And I just don't think it's gonna be warm enough, and I'm so sad. Oh, there's a little, you know, it snowed here this week too. It, it didn't really stick here. It just kind of, there were flurries and then it kind of left. But Lizzie says there's snow on the ground in Colorado. Can the weather just get the memo that it's me? So I'm just making this long snake. And um, for this part, you want it really thin. So the longer the snake, the better. You put too much, um, <clears throat> Man, I have that frog in my throat. That's okay, <laughs> on my show on Monday, I burned the snot out of my hand. Like, it's it's looking better now, but it was like blistering on my Facebook. It was pretty awesome. No. Okay, so we've got this long snake. I'm gonna hold it close to you so you can see how the silver and the white are incorporated. So we're making a pen kind of right now, kind of similar to this one. You see how there's that 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 uh, silver and white marbling on on the base of it. So before you start wrapping it around your pen, you're gonna start squishing it out. Actually, I think I'm gonna fold this over and roll it again so that the silver and the white are a little bit better incorporated because I want it to really look like they're supposed to be silver and white together. So tell me guys, are you Doctor Who fans or you just like crafts? So I am a huge Whovian. I discovered Doctor Who, hmm, when was it? 2000, 2009, I think it was. Um, I think Matt Smith had just become the Doctor when I discovered it. Because I remember watching Him in the Ponds live on TV when it would come on. So, um, we lived in Texas when I discovered Doctor Who. And we lived in this we lived in this little townhouse in kind of an unsafe part of Texas. And um, my husband took the car every... We had one car and my husband took it every single day to work. And I was stuck at home all day with our sweet little baby, who's eight now, 
is crazy. Um, but I stuck at home all day with her and it was hard. It was hard to be home and it was hard to be alone and everything. So I started like, you know, I would watch shows while I folded laundry and then we would, there was a little park in our little complex. And so I took her to the park and we'd watch shows while we made dinner together. And so I started looking for another good show and I discovered Doctor Who. And at the time it was like just what I needed, you know, like I was all alone and everything. So now we've got this long snake that's incorporated the colors. So we're just going to start squishing it, squish, flatten it with your fingers. You see how I'm flattening it? So I kind of just discovered it at the right time in my life. My husband always asks me if I think I would like it as much if I discovered it now, which I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but I discovered it like just when I needed it. And so it's become kind of a little bit of an obsession for me. I have a Doctor Who craft room. I have a TARDIS that stands about this tall in it. One day, I tell my husband all the time, one day I'm going to have a full-blown TARDIS shed in my backyard. And he always rolls his eyes. So we'll see if that happens. Um, so now that you're flattening it, you are going to take it and you are going to start wrapping it around your pen. Like this. So just flatten as you go. You want to get it really tight on the pen. You don't want tons of extra which I've already ended up with a little bit of extra. Let's start over. So, I'm so lucky. My best friend loves Doctor Who too. And so we do a lot of crazy Doctor Who stuff together. We go to Comic-Con. Um, we're in Utah, so we usually go to Salt Lake Comic-Con, which is the third biggest Comic-Con. And it is a blast. So, we've met... Who have we met? We've met... Matt Smith, who's the 11th Doctor. We've met Karen Gillan and Arthur Darville, the Pawns. We've met Billy Piper, who's Rose Tyler. Hi, Letty, we are making um, Doctor Who Sonic screwdrivers out of pens. They're really fun for Whovians, or if you're not a Whovian, they're just like a really fun pen to have. Um, I was saying earlier that if you're a doctor or you know somewhere in some sort of office where you didn't want people to steal your pens, it would be an awesome thing to do to them. So. Um, Susan just says she she needs to go to Comic Con. So I'm just you see how I'm just oop I broke it. I'm wrapping it around the pen, flattening as I go. Susan, we have so much fun at Comic Con, and <laughs> we're crazy. So we take we've taken babies to Comic Con. The first time my youngest daughter went to Comic Con, she was four months old, and I have the stinking cutest pictures of her and Eve Miles, who was in. Um, Torchwood, and I have the cutest pictures over with Paul McGann, who was the eighth doctor. And then, seriously, guys, I have to tell you, my, I don't know if you know John Barrowman. Um, I have the best John Barrowman story ever. So, my best friend and I, he came to Comic Con a couple years ago. He's actually coming this fall. I'm super excited. Um, Sarah wants to know how I adjusted from the weather in Texas to weather in Utah. You know what? Sarah, it was rough. And the hard thing is, is we lived all the way to the Gulf. So we had, I mean, it was really humid, but it was like kind of, you kind of, you get used to it and it was kind of a gorgeous humidity. And so I'm just wrapping around this pen. And um, you know what, Sarah, I thought the same thing. Like when um, my husband and I were talking about making these the very first time he was like, and um, he was convinced that it would melt. And so I kind of did it just to prove him wrong and it doesn't melt. Um, the beads will sometimes lose their color a little bit if you use plastic beads, but the pens don't melt. So you do want to take the ink out of them first. So I've taken, I've removed the ink from the, the pens, but they're not going to melt on you. Just bake them for the recommended a time amount of time for the recommended temperature, which is like 275. I think it's not very hot. Well, I mean, it's hot, but not hot compared to what we bake most things at. Let me see if I'm 275, 15 minutes per a quarter inch. So usually they're only in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. So sometimes a little bit longer, depending on what you make. Um, so, so it was rough. The hardest thing has been, Sarah, for us is losing all that humidity because my poor sweet little girl has horrific asthma. So not asthma, eczema. See how, see how that's turning out? 
And um, it wasn't something we had to deal with in Texas. I mean, we would deal with it, you know, if we went to visit family and stuff like that to less humid places. But we did never have to deal with it in Texas because, and so here it's just been brutal. It's been this like fight. We moved back here when she was three. It's been this like five year fight to try and get her skin under control. So I'm just wrapping it all the way down the pen. See? Um, so, oh, I was going to tell you guys my John Barrowman story. So I don't know if you guys know John Barrowman. If you don't, he is like hilarious and fantastic and wonderful. And a little bit crazy. I don't know that he, I don't know that I would call him kid friendly. <laughs> he makes a lot of inappropriate jokes and stuff. So you're just going to wrap all the way to the end here like this. This one's turning out great. I love it. So then we are going to grab... Next one we'll make is a coiled one, which turns out was not enough. Okay, so there we go. We've got the base of our pen there. Let's grab some, should we do red or blue, guys? Tell me, red or blue? So he's hilarious and awesome. He plays Captain Jack Harkness in Doctor Who and in Torchwood. And so he was at Comic-Con a couple, uh, several years ago when I want to say, my, yeah, so my youngest was four months and my best friend's baby was, so Lorene says he's a total sweetheart with kids, but his panel is definitely at least PG-13. Yeah, so if he gets like going and stuff like that, he's definitely um, blue. Okay, we're going blue. So let's warm up this blue. It's a little tough, so that might take us a minute. Um, <laughs> so we were, so we had just done a photo op with him, and like we were on this massive high from doing a photo op with him, and... Like, we were thinking that was the coolest thing ever, that we had just met John Barrowman. And so, Haley, so my youngest was four months, and my best friend's um, youngest must have been seven. Was she seven months? Eight months? I, she's watching. I, I swear, I didn't, wasn't just saying that into, like, the void. She's, wa she's watching. She's been commenting, so I know she's here. Um, and we were in line to take pictures in the TARDIS, and this guy... And, and just a t-shirt and tennis shoes and a backpack on, stops by the TARDIS and hops in the TARDIS with fans. And it's John Barrowman. And so we had our two little babies there and her sweet little baby started crying and he took both babies in their hand and in his hand. So we've got these pictures of him and I in the TARDIS, him and the two of us in the TARDIS and he's holding both of our babies and stuff. Um... <laughs> So, um, Lorraine says she thinks her baby was almost about eight and a half months old. So we've got this cute photo of him holding both babies in their hand, in his hands. And, you know, he was so sweet with them and so wonderful. And I don't think you ever, I don't think we like talked about how like, that's like the best Comic-Con moment ever. I don't know that we've ever been able to top it. We might be able to though if Tennant comes just cause we love, we love David Tennant a lot. I forgot about that. So she said that the reason, so L Lorraine here that you see commenting, she's, we have been best friends for 11 years, almost 11 years. We were roommates in college. And she said that the, the reason her baby was crying was because she had a fangirl moment when John Barrowman stopped by the TARDIS with us and he scared her. Carrie says, yes, David. Oh yeah, we call him our unicorn. We're hoping one day we can get him to Comic-Con. So we just found out that Donna is coming to Comic-Con in September, and I'm so excited because we haven't met her. So we've met um, Rose and Clara and Amy and, as I throw my clay. Where'd you go, clay? Uh-oh, hang on. Sorry about that. I lost my clay. Um, so the, the two companions that we haven't really met, of course, is the new one because she's not doing cons yet. And then um, <laughs> Lorene says, in her defense, I don't think she's fangirled that hard again. I don't know. I, I remember the moment we found out Matt Smith was coming to Comic-Con for the first time. I think we were both fangirling pretty hard. So, um, 
we have this cute picture. We took a picture with Billy and Karen, Billy Piper, Karen Gillen, and Matt Smith all together. And we have our cute little babies with us. And my little baby's looking up my Matt Smith like this. Like she's fangirl and it's so cute. I love it. So I got those hanging on my wall downstairs in my craft room. Okay. Let's warm up this blue. That's too bad that I dropped the blue off right after I got it warmed up. Um, so we're warming up this blue. We've got our pen wrapped in clay. Yeah, Carrie, we have we have been so lucky. We've had a lot of fun. David Tennant is like, he's still our unicorn. We're going to meet him one day. I wish Christopher Eccleston did cons, guys. It like breaks my heart. We always joke about how we're going to go to London and we're going to go somewhere we know he's going to be and just like accidentally run into him. But... <laughs> so I think there will definitely be fangirling if David Tennant ever comes. My husband like can't get into this at all. He doesn't like Doctor Who. He doesn't like any of this. And we always laugh because, well, this last con, is it in March? Um, the NCAA tournament was here in Salt Lake. And so we went up and we, we got two hotel rooms and we, we went on like a little couple's trip, but our husbands went and did the NCAA tournament and we went and did the con. And that was perfect because Apparently our husbands are lame and don't like to do them. Okay, so we've warmed up this blue clay and I've got blue clay somewhere else on my floor in my house. So we're gonna take a small piece and we're gonna roll it on the stinking parchment paper. <laughs> oh. It's been it's been a fun ride, I think, to to love Doctor Who. And I I think my husband always says that my best friend her um she fuels my fire fire. But we're always giving each other Doctor Who presents and I think we could match we could wear matching outfits for probably a week, maybe two, without repeats at this point, which is sad and awesome. Oh, Carrie says she's lucky that her husband's a Whovian too. That would be so much fun. Now, my husband's not super into anything really nerdy. I mean, he likes Star Trek. He's he's watched it, and he likes Star Wars. He likes he loves watched it, but I wouldn't call him like a Trekkie or anything like that. What do you call someone who's a fan of Star Wars? Because we've got Trekkies and Whovians. I really hate the term for Harry Potter fans, so it drives me crazy. Okay, rolling this out. Those of you that are just joining us, we are making Doctor Who Sonic Screwdriver pens. I gotta get going, or we're only gonna make one in our show. I wanna show you at least two. Okay, so we're rolling this into a thin snake. We've covered our pen. If you're just joining us and you wanna know how to, how to cover the pen, go ahead and share this um, to... Billy, are you saying Doctor Who? Your hubby got you into Doctor Who? Um, I, yeah. He's tried, my sweet hubby has tried so hard. We watch, I always tell people, you, if you're going to start with the, the new Who that started in 2005, you have to watch Into the Empty Child. If you finish The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances and you don't love it, you're no, it's not for you. You're never going to love it. So, um, then we are going to take this. And we are gonna wrap. So we are just making a like a little nest for the the marble to sit right now. So, but that seriously, the empty child, which is the "Are You My Mummy" episode, um, is probably one of the best episodes of of Doctor Who ever. It's one of my very favorites. What are your favorite episodes? Um, I'm trying to think of what are my other favorites. I probably have favorites of each companion. My mind's blinking right now. You know, it's funny. The first time I watched Doctor Who, I didn't love Donna. I really didn't. I thought, um, I thought she was annoying and really like uh, she kind of grated on me. And so I never really watched her episodes again. And then in preparation for the new season, um, 
I decided to rewatch everything from start to finish so that I would be all ready to go for the new companion. And I loved her this time. I, you know, her story made me, I think, sadder than any of the other stories this time. Just, you know, that she had, she'd over, she had learned so much and grown so much and then to have it all revert was just so sad for me. Um, but, uh, Lorraine saying that she loves, oh, Lorraine says the girl in the fireplace is one of my very favorites. I love Partners in Crime too. Partners in Crime is the adipose one. Girl in the, um, fireplace is the one with Madame de Pompadour, which is so good. Uh, Lorraine says she consulted Google and it says that Star Wars fans are called Star Wars fans. It's really boring. You need something, guys. Like Kubian or... Though I hate the potheads for Harry Potter fans. Okay, so I'm just rolling this on top. Um, I didn't have enough glue, so I'm rolling out a little bit more so that we can coil it up. You just want a place for your marble to sit. Um, glass marbles are the easiest for this project. But... My husband told me the other day that I sing a lot when I do lives or just in general. Apparently I do. Okay, so we are just gonna connect this. So coil, coil, coil. So now you've got this cool little coil at the top of your screwdriver. And we are gonna add, ooh, let's not add that one. That one looks like it's been goobered by a three-year-old. So we're adding the marble to the top here. And then we are going to add buttons to this. And this one's up. And then I'm going to show you how to make the super cool coil ones that I love. Oh, Billy says she also loves the stolen earth. That is a great one. I'm trying to remember what's my favorite of the ponds. Do you guys have a favorite of the ponds? Carrie says she's got to learn the names of the episodes. That's why I'm trying to tell you what this is. So, Partners in Crime is the adipose one. With Donna. Apparently, I'm too big of a Whovian. Is that possible? Ask my husband. He probably would say so. So, I have... There are little touches of Doctor Who all over my house. I have a Doctor Who spatula in my kitchen. and I have Cybermen on my cabinets in my craft room. Okay. So, I'm just flattening out little buttons. Okay, and adding them to, I think this button's too big. Let's shrink it down. Yeah, so I found Doctor Who at like the perfect time in my life. And so it's been, it's been really fun. I have a lot of Doctor Who clothes. My husband always says, are you going to dress normal today? Or like a Doctor Who fan? Always like a Doctor Who fan, honey. Always. Up today, I'm brushed pretty long. <clears throat> okay, so I've, if you look up in the description, uh, Lorraine says she's really liking the new companion. You know, I honestly will be honest, I haven't watched him yet. I'm almost caught up. I've got the husbands of River Song to watch, and then I'm, I'm ready for the new companion. So I'm almost caught up to the new companion. So I'm just creating little buttons here. I'm super excited to start the new companion. It's always a little hard for me. Although Clara wasn't my favorite companion, so maybe this transition will be a little easier. Billy says she bought all the new episodes on Amazon Prime so they can watch them all. I'm lucky that I have BBC America, so I've just been DVRing them. Okay, here we go. Maybe we should add some glue to the bottom. Let's add some glue to the bottom, guys. I, so, I love, um, Lorene saying Husbands of River Song is one of her top tens. I love Alex Kingston. Guys, she's like, so we've met Alex Kingston as well, and she's so fabulous and so wonderful and so funny. So, yeah, she's, she's a very favorite of mine. Okay, we're going to roll this little piece of blue, and then this one's done, and then I'm going to show you how to make a coil one. <clears throat> So then you just put these on a, a baking tray. Um, if you're gonna bake them in your oven, like I said, I like to do them in a dedicated toaster oven. Bake them on a baking tray, 275 for about 15 minutes to half an hour, depending on how thick you've made your clay. Ooh. 
flew all over my hands. Okay. So there's that one. Kind of patterned after this one a little bit. So let's make sure you how to make a coiled one. Let's do, what co color should we do for the coiled one? Let's do blue again. So I'm gonna open up this blue and the silver. This blue should be really easy to work with since I'm opening it straight out of the package. This isn't quite TARDIS blue. It's a lighter blue, but I think it's still pretty. Okay. So you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing we did with the first one. You're gonna snake two of the colors, make two long snakes. So I've got this lighter blue that I'm working with right now. So you're gonna want, oh, this has got a shimmer to it too. Pretty. Billy says her favorite's Billy Piper. Now is it because you share a name or because you love her the most? Tell me, Billy. What is it? So we're gonna snake it. I think uh, Rose has always been one of my favorite companions. Until this last time, I loved Donna a lot more this last time. So I'm super excited to meet her in September. Add her to my photo gallery. I have a huge photo gallery wall of all the people we've met from Doctor Who. And she's right up there on there. I'm excited to add. So it's got Alex Kingston, Matt Smith, Billy Piper, Karen Gillan, Arthur Darville, is that all? Why can I never remember Clara's name? Like the actress's name. I can never remember. She's up there too. Oh, and John Barrowman, of course, John Barrowman. Oh, and Eve Miles and Paul McGann. Are you guys fans of Classic Who or just the new series? I'm a little bit of both. I love Paul McGann. Um, but it's a lot harder to get a hold of the classic episodes, so I haven't seen them all. Okay, so I'm just sneaking this. Jenna Coleman, thank you, Billy. That's what Claire's name is. I knew that. Okay, so sneak it, sneak it, sneak it, sneak it. You want this to be really thin. Really thin. This is such a pretty blue, guys. I love it. So I'm so excited. Next week is the last week of school. That means my little sidekick will be back for my shows. It's been so hard not to have her with me. My little eight-year-old loves to do shows with me. She made me this Mother's Day book, and in the Mother's Day book, it said her favorite thing to do is do live shows with mommy. So we're gonna take this pretty silver. Um, hang on, really fast. Hmm, I can't read it while I'm on the live. My mother-in-law just texted me and I can't read the text while I'm live. Okay, so the silver. So we're doing this pretty blue and the silver. If you're just tuning in, we are making Doctor Who Sonic screwdrivers. And we've already gotten through one. So if you haven't, um, if you want to know how to make that earlier one, go ahead and share this to your timeline. So you can, once I'm off, it will allow you to skip around in the video so you can see what parts you need. And not just, you know me talking about Doctor Who. So I, my big fandoms are Doctor Who and Harry Potter. So my show on Monday. So I'm live on my page every Friday from 1.30 to 2.30 East, 1.30 to 2.30 Eastern, and I'm live every other Monday on Mama Loves Food, and the other Monday I'm on Spaceships and Laser Beams. So I do a lot of Doctor Who, a lot of Harry Potter, because Doctor Who, Harry Potter, why wouldn't you, right? Okay, so this, um, we've got the silver and the blue, and we are going to wrap them around each other just like we did before, okay? And then we are going to, oh, look how pretty that blue is, guys. I'm in love. We are going to roll those together, too. Roll them. So I've got a three-year-old and an eight-year-old at home. Well, not at home. That's just all I have. Um, Billy says she likes Martha and Donna are her favorite. You know, I just, I kind of wish they had changed, I like Martha, but I kind of wish they had changed her storyline a little bit. Uh, the whole, you know, in love with him and stuff like that. 
I don't know. I felt I was a little over that towards the end. But I loved her character. I loved how intelligent she was. I mean, Martha's brilliant. So, that her, the whole, like, she loved the doctor thing. I don't know. We I guess we just had a companion that fell in love with the doctor and Billy Piper. So I was ready to have something else. I think that's one of the reasons why I liked Donna so much. So you see how the colors are nice and incorporated. I think that's one of the reasons why I liked Donna so much was because she didn't love the doctor. You know, she just was his best friend. Okay, this is really pretty. I mean, I love these colors. So we want this to get really thin. So go ahead and roll that really thin. So what are you guys up to this weekend? Anything fun? We are... Carrie says she didn't enjoy Martha because David is Billy's. <laughs> I totally agree. I just, although if you've ever seen Matt Smith and Billy Piper together in real life, they are like the cutest friends ever. They're really, really good friends in real life. They're super cute. Okay, roll this really thin. Guys, I hate working on parchment paper. So you want to make one really long thing. Look how pretty those colors incorporated together. Make really, really long little sink. Use my books to hold these down. So I've linked, if you go up into the, the description of the show, I've linked a couple of my groups. I have a... I have a book group if you're a reader it's so it's such a fantastic way to find new books the people in that group are amazing it's been one of my very favorite groups to be part of there are always people are always saying I'm looking for this kind of book or my kid loves this kind of book what should I have them read and people are always fantastic in that group so if you're a reader go ahead and join that group if you're a crafter and want to share your projects and sometimes it's always fun to share your projects with other crafters um, there is a group up there that um, I admin that's for crafters where you can share and get inspiration. So go ahead and join those two if you're a crafter and if you're a reader. And even if you're not a reader, it's a great place to find reads for your kids and things like that. Things that they're actually going to be interested in. Okay, look how well. So I think I want it just a little bit thinner. So I'm going to go a little bit thinner. So my dream is one day, my parents took me to London when I was, for my graduation present when I graduated high school, and it was amazing. Um, my dream is one day, I'm gonna, me and my best friend are going to go to London together in Cardiff, and I don't think we're taking the boys. Our husbands are lame. <laughs> they won't want to do all the Dr. Who stuff for this. Okay, so we've rolled these out. So grab another pen that you've pulled the ink out of. Let me get this a little bit right here. So this one's going to need a little bit longer time in the oven because of the way we're going to wrap it. So just be aware of that, that it's going to need a little bit longer in the oven, okay? So grab a pen. Oop, that's the one that the tip wouldn't come out of. Grab a pen. And just start. Let's start from the... And just start coiling. And then this one, you want it, you don't want to flatten it with your fingers. You want it to stay looking like a snake. So you see how I'm coiling it. And kind of rotate it with your fingers as you go to get that good um, variation of colors. Carrie Wilson says that in Scotland, they have police boxes that they use as coffee stands. That is amazing. You know, I don't even drink coffee. And I might just like go wait in line to get one anyway and just hold it and feel cool about myself. Okay, so rotate the colors so you get the good. And this one is supposed to stay coiled. So you want this one to stay coiled. Wrap around. 
my mailman just came. Guys, I have an obsession with the mail. Is there like nothing better than getting mail? I love getting, unless it's bills. But for the most part, we've done all those ones paperless, so I've done mail. So we're coiling, you see how we're coiling here? Okay, coil, coil, coil. So we only want the middle section of this one coiled, so I'm gonna break it off right here. So there we go, that's the middle section of our pen. And um, now we are gonna add some silver to the top. So this, we are kind of duplicating this pen right here. You see, and I love the, this one has a little cage like the 11th Doctors. So Lorraine was just telling you my schedule. So yes, every Friday I'm here on Housewife Eclectic from 11.30 to 12.30 Eastern. Uh, no, 1.30 to 2.30 Eastern. It's 11.30 to 12.30 my time. So just flatten this out with your fingers. You're going to wrap it around to be like the cage for the marble. So, um, yep, 11, uh, 1.30 to 2.30 Eastern, struggles. And then I am on every Monday, every other Monday, I'm on Mama Love Suits, and the, the ones I'm not on Mama Love Suits, I'm on Spaceships and Laser Beats. Okay, so you're just gonna wrap this, or maybe we'll just wrap this around the bottom. Yeah, let's wrap this around the bottom. So we're gonna do the silver around the bottom. Just wrap it around. Make sure you leave a little bit of a hole there at the bottom to, so you can get your So if you are, those of you that are big Whovians, you should check out my site. Um, there's a link to it up in the comments. I have an entire Doctor Who Christmas tree that's rather amazing that Lorene has done a lot of this stuff on that I just am absolutely in love with. It's quite spectacular, guys. And then, so we've covered the bottom. Now we're going to cover the top a little bit and put the... Um, the marble in and then we will after we put the marble in we will add the little straps over on the cage and then I'm not gonna bake them with you live today because we're already close to the end of our show but and um, I will walk you through how to do it and then if you have any questions you're always welcome to comment on this video send me an email comment on the post on my blog anything I'm happy send me a message here on Facebook I'm always happy to help you figure this out okay Billy, oh, thanks, Billy. I'm so glad. We do a lot of fun Doctor Who stuff. So I'm wrapped, so I've got this big piece of clay. I'm wrapping around. So you want you want it to have almost like a little funnel thing here at the top that we're gonna put a bead in. This one I'm gonna use a plastic bead in. Um, like I said before, you just want to be careful when you lose, use the plastic beads because they can lose their color in the... So I'm going to put this gold one in. So. And they are going to have a lot more stability once you bake them. Um, make sure you... Take the, pen, the ink out and then put the ink back in. So there we've got this cute gold at the top. So then let's make the little cage for it. So where did my blue go? Here's my pretty blue. So I like to do contrasting colors on the cage and then the little, on the like holding thing and then the little cage. So we're gonna do the silver for the little holding thing and then we'll do thin strips of blue. Oh guys, I really like this one. This might be my new favorite. This is my current favorite. I love writing with this one. And then I love this one too. I love the red and the sonic screwdrivers. I don't know why I love this one. So um, these ones are ones I made relatively not that long ago, but I have some downstairs that I made four years ago, five years ago, and they're still holding up great. So um, I do have links in the comments to the couple of groups I admin. So my page is Housewife Eclectic. If you guys haven't liked that, go ahead and hop on there to see more Doctor Who, Harry Potter, fun stuff. And then I'm also an admin on Fangirl Crafts, which is a fun one that does a lot of Doctor Who that one, because any fandom, that's Supernatural or whatever. I have never gotten into Supernatural, so that's not... And it's not to say that I wouldn't get into Supernatural. I just... I'm not sure my pocketbook can afford another fandom, so I've stuck to Harry Potter. Because I have a full-size Harry Potter tree and a full-size Doctor Who tree. I don't know where I'd put a Supernatural tree. 
So my husband makes fun of me at Christmas. We have four Christmas. So you want to do this one really long and thin, okay? We have four Christmas trees. I have a full-size Doctor Who tree, a full-size Harry Potter tree, and then for him, because he's a guitar player, we do a rock and roll tree. And then I've got a little, we give every year for, um, on the first day of December, we give each of our kids a new ornament to signify what their year's been like. And it's been one of our like favorite traditions. And so they have their own little, it's a smaller tree, like a four foot tree that they get to put their ornaments on. So long and thin on this one. Okay, and then we are gonna break this in half right here. And we're gonna loop it over. And then just push it into the, the clay to secure it. And then do the other side. So I made this one, a, I didn't do it quite in half, I made this one a little bit longer. So I'm pulling the silver down just a little bit so that it's not. So that you can see a little bit more of the gold bead, which I like. Okay, can you see that? See that little bead in there this one I didn't do this one is tight on the bead this one's like super tight on the bead maybe I'll change that first now after I put the clay on let's change it I like it a little tighter on the bead so for me I think that's gonna mean taking some of this silver off I think there's a little bit too much silver holding this on you want just enough to hold your bead on without taking away from the bead. Okay. So now we are gonna go straight over the bead line. Oh, I like that much better. Okay. <laughs> so I just watched the episode of Clara and 12 in, I don't even remember what it's called but the one with the Faraday cage, and so that's what I keep thinking this is in my head. I know it's nothing like a Faraday cage, but there you go. And then we're gonna take some blue, a little bit more of the blue, and add some buttons, and then we're done, guys. Super easy. Throw them on parchment paper in your oven for about 15 minutes to a half an hour, depending on how thick they are. If you've coiled it all, you're probably gonna want a half an hour. Just watch them really close, especially if you use those plastic beads, um, because the plastic beads can lose their color if they're left in too long. Okay, the pens won't melt. Just make sure you've taken ink out of them. Um, Charisse, oh, they are super cute. They're so much fun. If you have kids, they're great to do with them. If not, that's a super fun adult activity too. Okay, so I just added buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and show. So this is the one we just finished making. I love this one, I think it's my new favorite. We made this one today too. And then let me show you the other ones we've got. So that's a coiled one with the cage. This one, I like this one. It has lots of buttons. There's a little bit of silver woven into the red. This is a mix of white and silver with the blue. Um, Carrie, they are cheapo pens. You want the cheap, cheap, cheap pens because um, if you get the nice and fancy pens, um, you have to screw the ink off the back and you're going to cover up the back. So that's not going to work. So you want the pens that you can pull the, so they look like this, that you can pull the ink out of the front. So let me show you this one. This one is this one. So you see how that slides in and then you can just pull it out of pen, the pen like that. So you want cheapo pens. Cheapo, cheapo, cheapo pens. Make sure after you are done, you store your ink and, uh, ink. Guys, struggles. And you store your clay and plastic bags or it will dry out and you won't be able to use it again. And um, it, is, it is always going to be a little bit harder to work once it's been um, opened. The softest clay is going to be the ones that you just opened straight from the package. But, okay, so throw on this clay in here. Make sure you work on parchment paper so that you're, you know, because clay for me is everything. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Facebook. Or you can look at the, I have, do have written instructions in the description of this um, post. Oh, hold on this one. And have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. On Monday, it will be on Mama Loves Food. So at uh, 1.30 Eastern. So I look forward to seeing you there. Have a great day.